The Three Economic Systems by Luisa, Sarah, and Juliana. An economic system is defined as the way a government and country manages the economy. This means each system has a unique way of managing free enterprise, entrepreneurs, and the three economic questions. What to produce, how to produce, and for whom to produce. The three economic main economic systems are traditional market and command. First, we'll be taking a look at the traditional economic system. A traditional economy is based on traditions, customs, and belief. The three economic questions are answered by tradition, what generations of citizens have done before. It also has gender roles. This means men have certain roles in the economy, usually taking care of things that require hard work, while women are mostly in charge of motherly duties such as cleaning, sewing, and so on. You won't see this type of system in countries that have large cities and populations. Instead, countries that practice a traditional economic system are found in rural parts of Asia, South America, and Africa. A traditional market system is based on the traditions of that country. The founders of the country pass their work on to their descendants who take the job as part of their heritage for many years to come. Traditional economies don't use technology because they believe that they need to produce what they need and what their family did. Family businesses might produce something as simple as peanuts. This tradition of selling peanuts runs down the generation. And even if someone is allergic to peanuts, they have to sell it. Otherwise, they'd be ridiculed by their family and village. This family sells peanuts until the end of the generation. And here's the market economic system. system is ultimately ruled by the citizens. This means prices and products are made according to supply and demand or what the consumers want. Private businesses and consumers work together to answer the three economic questions. These businesses have competition between each other to gain more profit. The government has little to no say in what the citizens do for the economy. Market systems are found in highly developed countries such as Australia, the United States, and South Korea. A market economy could also be described as a free enterprise system. In this system, everyday citizens become entrepreneurs as they create private businesses, in which the government has absolutely no say in what these businesses produce and how they regulate the production and employees. It's all up to the entrepreneurs and consumers. The things a business produces is also up to supply and demand, a system which the, supp the supply of a certain item is determined by the desire of it. For example, this business is selling high quality jeans for a low price because they have boxes full of them in the storage room. Buyers demand for these jeans and buy as much as they can until the supply drops. Then the businesses have to raise the price for these jeans according to the rate they're selling them. After all, these jeans aren't in infinite stock. And for our last economic system, here's the command system. by the central government. The government decides what to produce, how to produce it, and who to produce it for. This means citizens don't have much freedoms to what they're buying or what they're producing. The government mostly focuses on certain quotas but to be fulfilled by government-run businesses. This limits civilian freedom severely. This means they aren't allowed to have their own private businesses. The government decides the job of every citizen. The government pumps out a certain amount of products based on quotas. Many workers aren't happy with their jobs or the pressure of the quotas, but they can't complain because the government oversees everything they do. These command systems are usually found in dictatorships, and the governments here are usually very rough on the citizens. To put this in a perspective, this factory is run by the government. The workers produce socks and shoes only, and they are pressured to reach a quota of 1,000 pairs of shoes and socks by the end of the day. Most workers are working in jobs that they aren't very good at, but their supervisors are watching them closely to make sure nobody switches jobs or protests against the system. The finished socks and shoes are then shipped to the public or to other countries. These three economic systems are seen all over the world. 
All of them have their respective pros and cons, but there's no economy that leans completely to one system. Many of these systems are mixed together to create unique economic systems of different countries. Thanks for watching. Goodbye. Goodbye.